Welcome back everyone to the Money Control live stream. You're watching Markets with Santo and CJ. And well, a volatile and weak session on the Lal Street this afternoon. Uh, we are headed for a fourth consecutive day of losses with the Nifty and Sensex right now and near the day and lows of the day. Uh, if you look at some of the stocks or the sectors that are leading the benchmark indices lower is banks and ITs that are doing the major chunk of the damage at this point of time. But the pain, it seems, it's more in the broader market with the Nifty small cap index down about 1.5%, while the Nifty mid cap 100 index is lower by 08 to 0.9%. So clearly, it's been a very, very weak day for the bulls. And it seems like after last week's, you know, runaway rally, there's been some reality check for, for investors. Yes, clearly, uh, CJ, all signs of a mm. bear market here, considering that market has been struggling to sustain at higher levels. And we are seeing the classical trends, you know, market pulls back mm. only to slip further. Now, this time, uh, again, it, it just about briefly managed to top 16,000, but again, will yeah, now we have, have to broken see. broken below the even support of 15,900. So that's clearly. been a, a critical support level for the market. That has been broken today. Now let's still see. We have one more day left in the week. I'm sure, <laughs> CJ, you'll be a little more optimistic. I hope at least the Friday evening close is better because you would want to get into the weekend with a smile yeah, on your face. Yeah, but you know, the worrying thing is that market is not even responding to positive earnings. Now, Mind yeah. Tree's earnings were pretty decent in that mm. sense. You would have thought that probably, you know, there'll be some kind of a pullback in IT stocks, but that's not been the case. So when market stops responding even to decent set of numbers, you know, that sentiment is really, mm. really bad. That is now, true. This is the case with a company that has reported good numbers. Now, just think <laughs> of a situation where you'll have some not so good numbers coming in next week. That is week. true. That's it. Talking of, you know, stocks, let's quickly dive into five stocks that were really out there, which caught our attention, Santo. Well, Hindustan is the first stock and mm -hmm. outperformer in today's bearish yeah. market and for good reason. The company has announced a dividend of 21 rupee share which yeah. has got investors very excited. But CJ, I think the uh, the bounce in the stock could be temporary. You know, Of course, there's a strong dividend yield cushion at this mm -hmm. point in time and you would argue that in a, in a bearish market maybe investors would look forward to something like that. But other than the dividend play, you know, not many things are going, seem to be going Hindustan Zinc's way at this point in time. Because if you look at zinc prices, after touching a high of 4,500 plus sometime in March, it's now come down to close to $3,000 yeah. per ton level. And also there's a World Bank report which says that, you know, average zinc prices for this year could be around $2,400 per ton compared to, you know, $2,700 per ton last year. Now, there's one more trigger for Hindustan Zinc, which is that the sale of the government's mm -hmm. residual stake. Now, if that were to happen in a market where uh, zinc prices are quite buoyant and the company's yeah. operating performance were to improve, then maybe valuations would be better. But in this kind of a market, even if it comes through, the price may not be all that great. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm not very uh, bullish on Z Hindustan Zinc at this point in time, CJ. Yeah, Santo, I can I can understand where your you know your caution is coming from, especially from a fundamental perspective. But I think probably at this point of time, what investors are looking at Hindustan Zinc as as a cash cow. It's a it's a you know company that regularly continues to pay out almost sometimes even more than hundred percent dividend payout. So clearly, a lot of investors look at Hindustan Zinc more as a trading bet and you know being a dividend bet then probably a fundamental story where you want to you know take it into your longer term portfolio stock so i think from that perspective every time you know we inch inch closer to a dividend payout i think you will continue to see action on the stock and apart from that the one thing that you do, you know really st struck me that given the fact that it's a very cyclical stock i was looking at its return to equity profile and i mean the return to equity profile is quite strong for the stock i mean it has seen a gradual uptick and currently sits almost north of 25% uh, uh, based on FI22 numbers. So clearly, I think from an e uh, ROE perspective, the stock has been a good bet for investors. And along with the reduction in debt that we have seen, even though you know the fundamentals might be deteriorating a little bit with zinc prices coming off sharply from their highs in international markets, I think it will not be as much of a dampener as say pro probably in previous cycles when the company would have taken up a lot of debt to expand capacity and then zinc prices would you know, reverse. So clearly at this point of time, yes, profitability may not be great, but it could remain a tactical bet going ahead. Talking of, um, you know, long term bets, one stock that caught my eye, Santo, is IFL Wealth. Well, uh, I know that, you know, in a, in a, in a bearish equity sort of a, uh, equity market scenario, you don't want to be talking about capital market linked stocks. But hear me out on this one, because IFL Wealth, you know, I think is doing something 
that is quite hut k from everybody else out there in the in the capital market this is uh, i mean i would say that you you look at capital market and you go with cdss of the world your scf cmc of the world or your icic securities or angel ones right but i think this is one company which is in a segment which could be an evergreen which is the ultra hni and the hni segment i mean we know that the equity cult is rising in india and i think that it is more uh, you know sticky in the hni and uh, uh, ultra hni segment than in any other space and that is why i think you have seen you know brokers like bob capital also coming out with the initiation report on the stock and expecting an upside almost 43% in the in the coming year uh, now wh- why bob is so optimistic it is because the business model of ifl has take you know changed over the past one and a half two years they are moving away from you know upfront commission payment to trail based commission payment along with that they have a very diverse clientele so that is expected to aid earnings and bob is expecting about 20% annualized growth in aum over the next 3 years along with an 18% growth in pat so clearly a good fundamental story with which has a lot of sticky clients and can do well even if the market is adverse well it, it's not that i'm you know always opposed to uh, stocks related to the capital market even <laughs> in this kind of market because one can have contrarian bets now that apart you know uh, ifl here mm-hmm. uh, when you say you know it's got a evergreen kind of uh, business model here for you know high, more stickiness among ultra high net worth individuals i'm not sure how true that is because mm-hmm. when markets go through a severe downtrend you know even hni cut back yeah, on their true. investments in a big way so that argument may not be entirely correct the second thing here is that just look at uh, ifl's top line growth over the last 5 years you know last year was a kind of a blowout year for equities very uh, agree now between fi 18 and you know fi 22 the growth in top line has been barely what just not even 10% now mm. that is uh, uh, you know has me a little i wouldn't say concerned but it has me a little puzzled out there probably that is also because only recently they have you know uh, been able to go out and you know their marketing and distribution activities have become much more robust over the past one and a half two years and also it of course helps when the bull market is ongoing then it's very easier to probably onboard more clients uh, uh, you know uh, in the business but i i would suggest that probably at this point of time the way uh, you know bob capital also talks about it they believe that diversified client client base is what is going to ha- help uh, ifl uh, well because you do- don't only have U- ultra hni you know will probably be lump sum investors but you also have you know those sort of investors who just entered the hni band but are still you know salaried people who would want to be investing in the market on a consistent basis so probably that is what i think bob capital is also trying to allude to that the fact that uh, you know adversity in market uh, conditions may not entirely affect of course it will have an effect but it may not be entirely uh, we'll see uh, but in all probability fi 18 seems to have been a much better year for <laughs> ifl wealth well that said page industries now again a good pullback in the stock mm. it's up by more than 15% now one of the reasons i think uh, now one could argue against the stock on the basis of valuations but i don't think that holds much water it's been <laughs> always an expensive stock yeah, for it has been. you know for a very long time now uh, but that said you know the athleisure segment where uh, page industries of which is the bread and butter for this company that is now beginning to see a lot of competition and i think okay. you could now have some kind of uh, pressure on the margins which was not being seen so far uh-huh. okay secondly there has been a flight of safety to kind of defensive stocks which is why you're seeing fmcg and all other uh, you know consumer related stocks in a good uprun uh, uptrend right. in the recent run that i don't think can sustain for long third indicator cj you know this is the market typically when prices come down you see more of uh, promoters buying their own shares but in this case the promoters have actually cut stake hmm. you know during the june uh, uh, 22 quarter so that probably could have investors rattled a bit so that's why i'm very skeptical if the current up move in the stock that you've seen over the last couple of weeks two or three weeks can sustain i think sad to i would not me read too much into the promoter selling uh, you know at stake they're always entitled to ta- you know also take their profit because they are promoter ultimately and they have they also want to make some money out of the business but i don't think if it was a very large chunk that was being sold probably you would w- want to be uh, you know concerned but since it's a very minute stake that they have sold uh, sold off in the quarter i would not read too much into it but you know in terms of fundamentals i think we have to look at the longer picture for page and that is the fact that in the innerwear market where page is the dominant player i think a lot of the market is shifting from unorganized smaller players into the organized players thanks to you know 
reforms like GST and of course COVID and whatnot. So I think that is where I think Page will continue to remain a very important play for investors looking to you know benefit from that. Apart from that, of course, the athleisure market you spoke about, the focus has been rising there. Uh, over the past two to three years, and I, I don't think that the competition, because uh, you know, Page is probably in somewhere in the middle ground. It's not at the Nike editors level, but it's also not at the dollar or VIP level. So somewhere in the middle m middle ground where it caters to the middle class, I think it probably still uh, has a lot of you know brand loyalty in that sense because of Jockey, the partnership with Jockey. So I think that probably will hold its uh, margin profile going ahead. And lastly, I think. The March quarter earnings was 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 the surprise package, and I think that is why we saw the run up in the stock, uh, you know, over the past two to three months. And probably that shows that there is a lot of resilience in the management, and that they can tide through a lot of challenges. And I would expect a similar sort of performance in the June quarter as well. Well, one stock where uh, the market sentiment sort of has turned today, although it has been bearish for the the entirety of the past two weeks, is ONGC. The stock surged today. Uh, on reports that po there could be a possibility that the government might go easy on the windfall gains tax or the special additional excise duty was that was imposed on crude oil production in the country. Now, media reports have suggested that tomorrow, of course, there is going to be a review of the government step earlier this month. The government had earlier stated in its notification that they are going to review the, the imposition of the windfall gains tax every fortnight basis, and indications are that possibly there could be a moderation in the duty that was being imposed. And if that happens, clearly that is going to be a big catalyst for a revival in ONGC. You could see a lot of short positions in the stock being reversed if that uh, ends up being true. And it could also, of course, improve the earnings picture. Of course, it will not brighten it as much as having no taxes would have. But clearly, investors at this point of time will take anything uh, you know, on, on the ONGC front. So clearly, I think this could be something, this could be one stock to watch out for even from tomorrow's perspective, as and when the meeting happens tomorrow and we have the government's decision. Well, the government, you know, uh, at the time of announcing this uh, tax itself had said that it would review it every 15 days. Yes, yes. Uh, now, two things here. One is that valuations clearly are very supportive in, in mm. favor of ONGC at this point in time. But then again, exactly the point you made that, you know, investors would still prefer a, uh, a, no, a, no, no tax, no tax, no tax than, you know, some tax. But the other big worry also is that now, because of this growing uh, fears of recession, mm. right? You can see crude oil prices come off a little bit. Yeah. And if, when crude oil prices come off, at that point in time, sentiment for the stock will cool down a bit. Mm. So you may not see any runaway gains, but in the short term, probably, you know, if there is any change to the export, as there's a reduction in that, you'll definitely see a bounce. That bounce could be worth playing for. But again, the near term outlook, because now the outlook on crude has changed mm. in light of the change macro conditions, I think your stock doesn't make for a very long-term bet. Well, Santa, I think the only point here would be that probably if crude oil, say, if the car, you know the current ongoing uh, correction in the commodity stems at around ninety dollar per barrel, I think even then there could be still upside, uh, you know, in terms of average realization. Because let's not forget, even before the tax came in, uh, a lot of analysts were pointing out that the current market price of ONGC was only factoring in average realization of only 75 to 80 dollar per barrel. So clearly, even then, at that, you know, those levels, there was upside for more, uh, you know, earnings upgrade. So I would not be surprised that if, of course, this windfall gain tax probably is moderated and crude still settles at 90, I think there could still be room for some upside on the stock going ahead. Well, the last stock on our watch list today is uh, Jubilant Foodworks. CJ, the stock has been struggling since the start of this year and yeah. for, again for good reason, A, inflationary environment and B, I think now investors have a wider basket of QSR stocks to choose from, which was not the case till a couple of years back. So that clearly now seems to be going against uh, Jubilant Foodworks. The stock has been, you know, seeing some good rebounds, but it's again struggling to sustain at higher levels, which I guess would be mainly concerns over the inflationary environment, which in turn, you know, could affect margins, both because of uh, uh, consumers deciding to cut back uh, on eating pizzas, and also <laughs> because of higher input costs. Yeah, that is true, Santo. I mean, there, of course, has been concerns pointing out by analysts that inflationary environment could be negative for the entire QS, QSR space in general. But I just feel, uh, of course, with Jubilant, the, the X, another X factor was the fact that Prati Quota who was the CEO and MD for five years, uh, you know, decided to leave the company in uh, March and carry on uh, somewhere else. 
Now, of course, a new management has come in, and I, I have a feeling that they will probably be able to pick up the baton from you know where Porta left it and continue the path of you know diversification of a strategy that the company is looking at. If you look at you know Jubilance alone, they are no longer trying to be dominant just based on a, you know be a Domino's or a pizza company. They are trying to diversify their portfolio. They are getting into the biryani space. They are getting into the Chinese uh, you know food space. So clearly, they also know that they cannot just be a single product company. Uh, you know, forever they need to diversify their product, uh, you know, portfolio to be able to continue to grow at the pace that you know at one point of time th those premium valuations used to command. So clearly, I think that is something that investors will take note of once the you know near term uncertainties are taken care of. And overall, also, I mean, the QSR space is still a, such a lucrative space to be in. The runway for growth is so so long. That you just don't want to be, you know, short-sighted in a sector like this. You want to be betting on the leaders, and Jubilant Foodwork clearly is a leader. Well, with that, let's take a quick look at the market yes, at this point in time. It doesn't look pretty, does it? Uh, but it has managed to trim. The Nifty has managed to trim some of the losses. Do you think, do you think we'll end in the green? You want to take a bet? I doubt, CJ. I would still go with the red. What about you? I just, I just have a feeling it might end flat. Probably, probably it will be great if we could end, end in green. But probably towards the flat line. I think we are heading towards the flat line. It seems like the market is comatose at this point of time. It flaps it, you know, legs and you know, hands a lot, a little bit. But by the end of the day, it ends up probably. Uh, Tata LXC seems position. to be the uh, rare gainer in the IT. Yeah, ahead of space. his earnings as well. 1.3 percent up. Yeah. Uh, Nalco is uh, also down. Hindustan Copper is down about close to two percent at uh, 89 rupees 35. Well, look at it. look at some of the losers today. Santo in the Nifty, Hero Motor Corp surprisingly the top losers the loser down about two percent. Given that Hero Motor Corp has actually been one of the outstanding performers of this year, Axis Bank down another two percent. HCL Tech of course unsurprisingly down another two percent after the muted Q1 earnings and the uh, commentary there. And SBI, very surprisingly, SBI also a lot of banking names have taken a toll today. As I mentioned earlier, banks have been one of the reasons why we have seen, uh, you know, the negative negativity on the market. And clearly, some of the big banks like Axis Bank, SBI, CSI Bank are taking it on the chin today. Well, uh, with that, what do you have to keep on the horizon for? Well, Santo, I think uh, there are a few things that, of course, we have to keep. Of course, there are a few earnings, not major earnings, but uh, you know, smaller earnings, but. First of all, of course, the initial jobless claims data in the U.S. that is going to come out later today. Of course, on the back of the you know the scorching CPI print that we saw yesterday, it will be important to see how the you know the uh, uh, real uh, economy is performing. So clearly, that data point will be quite important. Apart from that, a Fed member Chris Waller will be giving a speech later today. Now, the speech is going to come after that CPI data. We have to see what he has to say. Whether he will be in support of what. What has Pierre Bostic had to say in terms of everything is in play for July? A hundred basis point hike, seventy-five basis point hike. We don't know. So clearly, his comments will be important. And on the earnings front, of course, we have Federal Bank, LNT Tech, and Jindal Steel, of course, reporting their first quarter earnings tomorrow. So th those will be the numbers to watch out for. Also later today, don't forget ACC is going to be re uh, reporting its earnings along with Tata Electric. So those are another two counters that will be reacting to their numbers tomorrow morning. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets with Santo and CJ. Thank you for watching and do share your feedback in the comment section below. And as usual, guys, keep following us on the social media links at the bottom of your screen. And for rest of your financial news, stay tuned to moneycontrol.com and download the Money Control app. We'll catch you again live tomorrow at 9 a.m.